The 2023 NBA Summer League is in the books, and that means we won't see any notable players play until the FIBA International Tournament in August. But in today's video, I want to talk about the Summer League's top performers and talk more notably about the top end prospects that could be making big impacts in the 2024 season. A couple of the players mentioned in this video were blue chip prospects, that they pretty much did what expected and dominated Summer League, and some other ones were just some sleepers going into summer league and nobody really expected too much so it was nice to see them increase their value and if there's any player that i don't mention that deserves some love let them get that in the comments let's hop into this so the first player i want to talk about is the summer league mvp cam whitmore it's still kind of crazy to me that cam whitmore fell to 19 in the 2023 draft i mean we all knew it on draft night that in one way or another this was going to be an absolute steal for the houston rockets and after the draft i was like you know what nba gms know more than us like there was definitely a reason why he did fall and there were some injury concerns in his pre-draft workouts but after watching what he did in the 2023 summer league i don't know how he fell outside the top 10 whitmore like i said was your summer league mvp he played in six games for the houston rockets averaging 19 points five rebounds two assists and two and a half steals a night for them he shot 44 percent from the field and really just showed everybody why he should have been a top 10 pick on draft night and is going to be an absolute steal for the houston rockets in the long term all right i'm gonna be honest i wasn't the biggest fan of keontae george coming out of baylor and what i watched from him in the summer league in just three games i think i'm just changing my mind already on him in the three games he played for the utah jazz he averaged just under 22 Two points a night, six rebounds, and shot 52% from the field and 44% from three on nine attempts a night. He was getting to the basket with ease. His jump shot looks so smooth. And averaging 22 points in 25 minutes a night is just no joke. His efficiency was off the charts. I'm still a little worried about his free throw percentage because I don't love what he's doing at the line. And he only shot 63% at the line in the summer league. But I'm really just nitpicking here. Keontae George is going to be special for the Utah Jazz in this upcoming season, joining that all already talented young core with Walker Kessler, Lowry Markkinen, Colin Sexton, and their other top 10 pick in Taylor Hendricks. Orlando Robinson deserves some love out of Miami. The Heat did lose some major rotational pieces in the 2023 offseason with Gabe Vincent going to the Lakers, Max Schroes going to the Cavs, and Victor Oladipo going to the Thunder. But Orlando Robinson looked phenomenal in four summer league games with the Miami Heat, averaging 26 points a night, nine rebounds, four assists, and a steal and a half, while shooting 57% from the field and 35% from three and oh yeah 82% from the line on seven attempts a night he was dominating summer league basketball he was on a two-way contract last year with the Miami Heat and you have to expect him to being a full-time player for them in the 2024 season his just performance against the Boston Celtics on July 8th was just out of this world where he had 36 points 11 rebounds four assists and two blocks I definitely recommend watching the highlights of that game remember how I said in the beginning of the video that there were some blue chip prospects that just dominated the summer league well yeah Jabari Smith Jr only played in two games for the Rockets, but he averaged video game numbers in those two games. 35 points, seven rebounds, four assists on 48% shooting in those two games. Yeah, he was just a force for the Rockets in those. And I don't think another player helped his public perception than Jabari Smith in this tournament. Because I'm telling you, before the summer league started, people were definitely questioning his future in Houston. People were saying Tari Eason, who was another player that dominated in the summer league in just two games, deserves to start at the power forward spot over Jabari Smith Jr. next year. Well, yeah, Jabari Smith Jr. just shut those rumors up. I'm going to be so excited to watch him under Ime Odoka's system next year. Let's talk about Jabari Springer for the Philadelphia 76ers. I really like Jabari Springer coming out of Tennessee and I thought it was a great first round pick for the Philadelphia 76ers last year and he had a really disappointing rookie year. He didn't really get a lot of playing time but in three summer league games for the 76ers he did average 22 points four rebounds, two assists, and a whopping 2.7 steals a night and 1.3 blocks a night from the guard. He also gave you 48% field goal shooting, 31% three-point shooting, and 78% free throw shooting. And like the Heat, the 76ers did lose some key rotational pieces next year in Shake Milton going to Minnesota, Jordan Niang going to Cleveland, and Jalen McDaniels going to Toronto. So Jaden Springer might have a big opportunity for the Sixers coming off the bench next year. All right, I'm going to be honest with you. I had no idea who Javon Freeman Liberty was going to the summer league but now i definitely know who he is so he's on the chicago bulls he played in five games for them and he averaged 21 points four and a half rebounds four and a half assists for the bulls on 49 percent field goal shooting 46 percent three-point shooting and was just a two-way beast for the bulls in the summer league he was on the all summer league second team and definitely deserved those honors and he's going to be somebody that we got to keep an eye on in chicago because they don't have the best young core in the world and if they can get some key minutes out of freeman liberty next year 
it's definitely something of note. The New York Knicks did not have a good summer league roster whatsoever. It was probably the least exciting roster out of any team in the league, but Charlie Brown Jr. had a phenomenal four games for the Knicks. He was by far their best player, averaging just under 20 points a night on 54% shooting. He took about 13 shots a night. He also shot 37% from three on six attempts a night. He was efficient from the line and also gave the Knicks six rebounds, two assists, 1.8 steals and 1.8 blocks a night. The New York Knicks are going to have a deep roster this year, so he's probably not going to make an immediate impact for them. But if the Knicks do have an injury in the backcourt or on the perimeter, Charlie Brown Jr. could definitely get some playing time for the Knicks next year. I also have to talk about Hunter Tyson of the Denver Nuggets. Man, the Denver Nuggets really aced this 2023 draft. The 6'8 forward out of Clemson was just phenomenal for Denver in five games where he averaged 20 points, six rebounds, and shot 50% from three on seven attempts a night. Now, I think there is an opportunity that he could get playing time for the Nuggets this year, even though they are one of the best teams in the NBA. Him being 23 and a more experienced player coming out of the draft with a 37th overall pick, he could be a nice role player off the bench and definitely learn from what Christian Brown did in 2023. Sam Morrill bounced around on a couple teams so far in his career, but he really had a great showcase for the Cavs. He was named to all summer league first team and for the Cleveland Cavaliers in five games, he averaged 20 points, four rebounds, three assists a night and also shot 44% from three on a whopping 11 attempts a night. This guy was an absolute sharp shooter in these five games. He was the Mr. Relevant pick back in 2020. And in 2023, he played only in five games for the Cavs. It was his third team in three years. So it's going to be a make or break season for Sam. And the Cavs don't have the deepest bench in the world. And if an injury or two does happen, he's definitely going to be that next man up in his age 27 season. Second and last player here, I want to talk about Max Christie of of the LA Lakers. Christie only appeared in three games for the Lakers, and I really liked him as a prospect coming out of Michigan State when the Lakers snagged him in the second round in the 2022 draft. But in those three games for the Lakers, he did average 19 points and he was very efficient 46% from the field, 50% from three, and didn't miss a single free throw. He was just wet from the line in those three games. He also gave the Lakers six rebounds four assists tonight, and oh yeah, 2.3 blocks. He was a menace on the defensive end. I don't know if he's going to get playing time right away for the Lakers because they do have a deep roster, but I hope we could see something out of Max Christie in his second year. And the last player I do want to talk about is Imani Bates. And after Sam Merrill, he was the second best player on the team that won Summer League, the Cleveland Cavaliers. He averaged 17 points on 44% shooting from the field. He shot 40% from three on seven and a half attempts a night, and also snagged six rebounds for the Cavs. Bates was a polarizing prospect going 49 to the Cavs. He was a notable name out of Eastern Michigan because he was a top recruit going into the 2023 collegiate season and it didn't work out for him in Memphis. And he definitely has his flaws as a prospect, but he 100% helped out his public perception with this summer league and could be another rotational guy for the Cavs either this year or or next year because he's still only 19. I hope you guys enjoyed that video. And like I said, let me know in the comments if there was any player that I didn't mention that deserves some love. The Summer League was a joy to watch and I have to go out to Vegas next year. I've been saying it every year. I need to make it out there. But I hope you guys did enjoy the video. Drop a like if you guys enjoy this style of content. Subscribe if you are not already. I love you guys and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.